10, we have drunk Elizabeth Taylor opens envelope early at the Golden Globes. At the 58th Golden Globes in 2001, veteran actress Elizabeth Taylor slurred her words as she got on stage to present the award for best drama. She drunkenly says, Here are the nominees for the best drama. Then she goes on to open the envelope containing the winner instead of reading the nominees on the auto cue as per procedure. The audience starts shouting at her to stop, and a producer awkwardly comes on stage to tell her how exactly to read that auto cue. When she sees him, she drunkenly says, Hello. He then subtly scolds her and she reads the nominees before struggling to open the envelope to announce the winner, Gladiator. She later stumbles as she thanks the audience and bizarrely says, You are all a lot while waving her arms. What a babe, what a legend. Coming in at number nine, we have Katy Perry mistakenly given Rihanna's award at the NRJ Music Awards. At France's 2009 NRJ Awards, Katy Perry accepted the award for best international single when it was actually actually supposed to go to Rihanna for Disturbia. Disturbia! Still so good. The host had read out the wrong award card. Katie was actually supposed to win for best international album for One for the Boys. The gaffe came after Katie had already been embarrassed for not understanding French when a DJ had asked her, riffing off the auto cue about her song I Kissed a Girl, if she would actually like a kiss and Katie confusedly just simply said, oui. Later she looked very shocked when the lips came her way. From one pop star to another, at number 8, we have the time Madonna fell over at the Brit Awards. At the 2015 Brits, the 56 year old former queen of pop and renowned diva was performing an energetic performance of her new track Living for Love. The dance routine involved her shedding a cape, only it went very very wrong during the live show and instead of her cape coming off as it was pulled back by a dancer, she actually took a tumble down the stairs with her cape still on, landing on her back much to the gasps of the audience who weren't sure if it was part of the dance or whether she had simply fallen over. She stopped singing only momentarily and like the pro she is, she got back up to finish her song. The internet promptly went wild. If you watch the fall in slow motion, it is actually pretty crazy. Like. Ow. Next up, the first of several Oscars mix ups. Coming in at number seven, we have the wrong Frank accepting an award. At the Sixth Academy Award, which took place in 1933, Will Rogers, the host presenting the Best Director Award, opened up the envelope and instead of announcing the full winner's name, he simply said, Come and get it, Frank, forgetting that there was actually two Franks nominated. Frank Capra jumped up to collect the award, which actually was meant for Frank Lloyd for Calvacade. Awkward. Next up, we have the infamous Adele Dazeem moment from the 2014 Oscars coming in at number 6. Oh dear. Veteran actor John Travolta made the actually kind of hilarious blunder as he misread the auto cue when he was introducing Adina Menzel who was about to go on stage to sing Let It Go from Frozen. Instead of saying her name, he introduces the wickedly talented, the one and only Adele Dazeem. It's weird. He looks weird. It's crazy. It makes me laugh every time. I have to say. Adina is then revealed on stage wearing a beautiful show stopping dress and just kind of has to deal with that intro and get on with her song. Coming in at number 5, we have the time Ronnie Wood threw a drink in a DJ's face at the Brit Awards in 2000. As Rolling Stones rock legend Ronnie Wood took to the stage along with his drink, actress Thora Birch and host Davina McCall to present the award for best soundtrack, DJ Brandon Block invaded the stage. The DJ pest point at himself as the winner instead of Notting Hill, which was just announced. How the DJ got on stage, we don't know, but Ronnie Wood was not happy about it. As security came on stage to get the DJ, Ronnie said, Get off stage, you. Well, actually, I can't say that word because it's pretty bad and it came out live on air. The DJ then squared up to the rock legend, swearing at him. Ronnie then threw a drink in his face and continued to swear at him. Finally, after the intruder was removed, Ronnie mourned the loss of his drink. Wow, imagine watching that live, it must have been chaos. Coming in at number 4, we have Kanye's 2009 Video Music Awards stage rant. In 2009, Queen Swift had yet to ascend to her throne. The then 19 year old had just won Best Female Video for You Belong With Me, fending off some stiff competition from Beyonce for single ladies. As the sweet 19 year old country singer accepted her award, Kanye stormed the stage and delivered his now notorious, Yo, Taylor, I'm really happy for you, but I'm gonna let you finish. Beyonce has one of the best albums of all time. Speech. You know the one. Everyone was embarrassed, including Beyonce. And poor Taylor Swift stood there like 
a lost lamb, and she hasn't really forgiven him since. Moving on to number three, we have the infamous Oscars streaker of 1974. Goodness me. As British actor David Niven was introducing Elizabeth Taylor at the 46th Academy Awards, a streaker ran behind him, causing a very big stir, especially for the more conservative 1970s audience. Nivens uses his unwavering stiff British upper lip to soldier on, remarking, The only laugh that man will get in his entire life is by stripping off and showing his shortcomings. Ouch. As Elizabeth Taylor came on stage, she jokingly quipped, Whew, That's a tough act to follow. Coming in at number two, we have the most recent Oscars gaffe. Faye Dunaway and Warren Beatty were presenting the award for Best Picture, but wrongly announced La La Land as the winners. Awkwardly, the whole La La Land troupe got up on stage, ready to accept the award, including stars Emma Stone and Ryan Gosling. As one of the producers was mid-speech, the team found out that actually the host had read the wrong card. The producer then finishes his speech by saying, "Yeah." Well, we lost by the way. Moonlight, you actually won. Cue the confusion and the awkward gasps coming from the audience. The Oscar was then prized out of the La La team's hand and passed swiftly over to the Moonlight team, whose big moment was somewhat overshadowed. Coming in at number one, really there is only one moment that can be top of this list. This is the cringe to end all cringe, the biggest fail of them all. We of course have Steve Harvey announcing the wrong winner at the Miss Universe Awards pageant in 2015. This is actually devastating. Host of Miss Universe Steve Harvey read the results card wrong and announced the wrong winner. Instead of declaring intended winner Miss Philippines as Miss Universe, he announced first runner up Miss Columbia. Miss Columbia then celebrates for two minutes, raising her country's flag, putting on the Miss Universe sash and receiving the crown, smiling and waving regally. That was until Steve Harvey she officially walks back onto the stage and says that he needs to apologize. Miss Columbia still has no idea what's happening and thinks that it's all a big joke, until he's actually declaring that Miss Philippines is the winner, and she starts walking forward, and uh oh, wow, now somebody needs to take the crown off Miss Columbia, who is starting to cry. All live on air. What a horrible thing to happen. I'm not sure I would ever be able to live that down if I was Steve Harvey. Okay, so let's get right into this list. Starting us off, number 10, we have Judge Judy, who called people Dumb. My ideas come from people who have dumb brains. No doubt. <laughs> Did you ever hear the expression, beauty fades, dumb is forever? Either you're playing dumb, or it's not an act. <laughs> Judge Judy, she has a tendency of calling a lot of people dumb. There must be over a hundred people. Also, check out what she likes to also call people in at number nine. Okay, so let's take a look at this next video. Mr. Fields? Yes, ma'am. You're an idiot. <laughs> And I'm going to explain why you're an idiot, sir. Is this real life right now? It's so funny how there are so many people, you know, who want to come on the show knowing how brutal, how savage Judge Judy can get, how savage she can be. So in this case, Judge Judy explains to this guy why he's an idiot, and she explains it to millions of people. You guys have to watch this. I'm going to explain why you're an idiot so that your family will know you're an idiot, your friends will know you're an idiot, everybody here will know you're an idiot. 10 million people in the United States will know you're an idiot, and probably 100 million people throughout the world will know. <laughs> Why, what's your first name? Waddell. Why Waddell Fields is an idiot. Alright. Wow, she made him say his first name just so everyone knows who he is and that he's an idiot. Alright, let the savage moments continue at number 8. Judge Judy tells off this teenager who was getting sued. Six of what? his friends? Were you cursing at five or six of his friends for, you idiot? <laughs> what? Put your hands down. Judge Judy just wasn't taking the bad attitude from this teenager at all. I mean, take a look at what this teenager says next that made this video clip absolutely viral. What were you cursing at them for? Because they're losers. Oh. Okay, wait, what the heck did she just say? Because they're losers. Losers? Lose, losers? Loser turds? I've never heard of this word before, so you know what? Let's Google it. Well, actually, something came up. It says the word was invented by Alexander Nelson, the defendant of an episode of Judge Judy. All right, enough of making up words. Let's move in to number seven. Yeah, and he doesn't care. I'm getting hysterical. Well, I'm sorry, but I'm I know that hysterical. this man knew he was to take the futon from my house. He and I have been friends for years. And I want you to stop getting hysterical over nothing. So 
Sometimes I do feel like Judge Judy has no emotions, but she kind of has to take her emotions out of these cases so, you know, she can make the right and fair ruling. Judge Judy, though, instead of telling the woman to, you know, calm down and to help her calm down, she just starts yelling at the woman. Look at my eyes. Did you look healthy? I don't have a lot of money, Your Honor. Listen to me. I don't care whether you have a lot of money or not. It was a misunderstanding. No. Goodbye, Miss Klukas. You're not paying attention. He's well. You're well. You're here. It's furniture. Number six, this next moment also went viral. Judge Judy had to decide who owned this dog in this case, so what she decided to do was bring in the dog into the courtroom, and then this happened. Listen to me carefully. Don't, Put the dog down. Don't, Put the don't, dog don't, down. Don't. <laughs> yes, that's you. <laughs> So when the dog was placed on the ground, the dog went right to the owner, and then this case was quickly closed. I mean, Judge Judy, what a savage. She wasted no time. She didn't even care what anyone had to say. Just bring in the dog, and the dog knows who the owner is. Oh. That's all. Take the dog home. Thank Parties you. are excused. You may step out. Number five, it's time to kick out a paid extra in Judge Judy's audience. Because you don't want to eat... You don't want to eat that food. That's life. No, it's not my life, not her life, it's not Stuff Bird's happens. life. <laughs> Out. Did you hear what I said? You know who I'm looking at. You got my eyes? Blue. Black. Out. Out. Judge Judy just doesn't give a damn. It's not only terrifying to getting sued on TV in front of Judge Judy, but it's also nerve-wracking sitting in the audience of Judge Judy. Well, apparently this guy was laughing too loud or something, but Judge Judy does not want him in there. I wonder how many people she's kicked out. Number four, Judge Judy is actually pretty calm in this next one, but what she says, pretty savage and intimidating. Listen. You and I have a problem because I don't think you know the truth that it comes up and slaps you in the face. This girl was being sued by her ex-boyfriend after they split. All this girl was doing in court was lying and Judge Judy quickly figured it out and pointed it out to her. Moving into number three, we have these two ladies who are not listening to Judge Judy when she's telling them, you know, shh, like be quiet, like shut the hell up. You're drunk all the time anyway. You're twice as drunk and half as attractive. Cool. Well, Judge Judy doesn't even want to talk to him anymore at this point, so she just turns to her security and uh, she tells him this. Tell them goodbye. goodbye. Parties are excused, you may step out. That is just ruthless. I guess this is a lesson learned. These girls have to learn how to listen. They need to hear what Judge Judy is telling them, but they just didn't care. They just started talking to each other, and you're not even answering the questions to her, so you may as well just dismiss your case. Number two, Judge Judy goes off on this witness who is the defendant's husband. Judge Judy points out that the shirt he is wearing was a horrible shirt, and he made a horrible decision by wearing that shirt, and she just wanted to let him know. Mr. Gordon, that's a ridiculous shirt that you chose to wear to court today. I'm just letting you know that. Do you Thanks. understand? Yes. I mean, I don't know what kind of statement you thought you were making, but if you wanted to leave the impression on this piece of tape that you're going to have for posterity for your children, that you are an intelligent thinking person, that shirt that you're wearing belies that fact. Okay, wow, she just took things on a personal level. Okay, finally, number one, the last savage moment I have for you guys was actually on a Family Guy episode, and I came across this one when I was researching this video for you guys. It was absolutely hilarious, and it, it actually makes fun of Judge Judy, but I wanted to give you guys this one watch. $1,000? Right. But it's gonna be hard to get that kind of money. I mean, I'm not Judge Judy. Hi, I'm Judge Judy. I get paid $45 million a year to yell at people who have nothing. Now, here's an ad about a fat people disease you have. In at number 10, we have Paris Hilton cooking bacon with an iron. This simple life is so underrated. I thought it was an excellent show. Beginning in 2003 and running until 2007, we watched millionaires Nicole Richie and Paris Hilton get up to all kinds of mischief as they take up low paid jobs and stay with humble families across America. In one episode, Paris prepares a meal for the family she is staying with, but as she can't work the grill, she decides to use an iron instead. Yep, a household iron used for removing creases in fabric to cook her bacon. It's sizzling, it's gold. Up next at number nine, we have the time a plane flew over the Big Brother house with a banner. <gasps> Big 
Brother originated in 1999 in the Netherlands and was since syndicated across many countries. In the 8th season of Big Brother US, a banner was flown over the house as contestants were in the garden participating in a challenge. The banner read, We Heart Nick, Amber and Eric are liars, LNC is the nerd herd. Cryptic. When housemates saw the banner, it all kicked off. Not only were show producers not okay with the outside influence, Eric cried and got into a fight with his fellow contestants, as did Amber. Drama, 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 drama. The banner led to a cease and desist order being issued to a local aviation company. In at number 8, we have Leo Sayer escapes the Big Brother house. More Big Brother, oh my goodness, we just keep on rolling. There have been many cases of escaping in the Big Brother house during their time, but this is one of the most hilarious and shocking. We have the time Leo Sayer escaped from the celebrity Big Brother UK house. Leo Sayer known for hits such as You Make Me Feel Like Dancing, was participating in the 2007 UK celebrity Big Brother when he became enraged that the producers wouldn't give him new underwear. He was against using the washing machine and called the show unsanitary. He then broke through the garden fence and got into a fight with security guards, telling them to F off. The security guards then detained him and a producer comes to talk to him before he gets violent again. He said, I want to leave this f stupid country and go back to Australia. I think this is all a sick joke. In at number 7, we have the time Kathy pees on John in Survivor. It was only a matter of time before this kind of thing happened on the US TV show Survivor. In the fourth series of Survivor Marquesas, contestants are on an island in French Polynesia. To cut a long story short, John is fishing in the ocean when he steps on a sea urchin. John then asks somebody to pee on him to reduce the swelling. He literally screams, I need somebody to pee! Luckily, Kathy came to the rescue. The cameras catch the whole thing, but to cover Kathy's modesty, her stream is out of shot. We can, however, hear the whole thing and see John's reaction to being peed on. Great. From urine to poop all over celebrities' hands. Do you guys remember that time that Nicole Richie put her hand up a cow's behind on The Simple Life? Well, this comes in at number six. This is our second entry from The Simple Life. What a treat! Nicole says this is one of her standout moments from the entire show's history, and it's easy to see why. In one episode, the heiresses work on a farm. Nicole bravely volunteers to check on a pregnant cow, which involves sliding her hand up its butt. Shockingly, we see full insertion, which is pretty graphic. Nicole then runs after Paris, trying to touch her with the arm that's literally been in the cow. Gross. In at number 5, we have the Who Wants to Be a Millionaire Cheater. So this episode of Who Wants to Be a Millionaire never actually aired, but footage has since been released. And it's totally shocking. In 2001, UK Who Wants to Be a Millionaire contestant Charles Ingram cheated his way to winning the top prize, and it is so obvious. He and his wife and another contestant concocted a rudimentary coughing scheme that is pretty blatant on reflection. He then celebrates his win with a shocking level of believability. You're a liar, Charles. You don't deserve this. Luckily, Charles was eventually caught and given an 18-month prison sentence. This one's crazy. In at number 4, we have Vern Troyer peeing himself on The Surreal Life. The Surreal Life was a TV show that focused on fading Hollywood stars and put them all together in a mansion for two weeks. The fourth season had Austin Powers star Vern Troyer, who played Mini-Me, right on in it. Vern revealed himself to be somewhat of a drunk, and in one episode, he got totally wasted, rode his disability scooter naked, and then peed up a wall in plain sight of everyone. Like, um. So next up, we have a shocking reality TV moment that is absolutely not okay on playback, and I have no idea why there wasn't a bigger deal made over it at the time. In at number three, we have racism in Celebrity Big Brother. So it is bad enough when average people are casually racist, but when celebrities, albeit Z list, are outwardly racist, something has gone terribly wrong. They are supposed to be role models, so this is really isn't okay. In the 2007 Celebrity Big Brother house, the same one that our mate Leo Sayer escaped from, there was a load 
attitude of racism aimed at Indian housemate and award winning Bollywood star Shilpa Shetty. UK model Danielle Lloyd told her to f off home. Jade Goody called her Shilpa Poppadom and her boyfriend used a racially expletive word. Following that, pop star from S Club 7 Joe O'Meara said that all Indians were thin because they're always sick from undercooking their food. That is an absolutely horrible thing to say, and the racism in the series sparked 44,000 complaints to Ofcom. Taking it to a really gross place in at number 2, we have Vomlet. This will actually go down in history as one of the grossest things I've ever seen on a reality TV show. Blech. In Jackass's season 3, Chef Dave England consumes raw eggs and other omelet ingredients, which he then, um, like, mixes in his stomach, then vomits up, cooks it, and eats it. He later does the skit again, and this time Steve O eats it, then vomits. Thanks for that, guys. Okay, so this is one of the worst mistakes in broadcast TV, and it is so embarrassing to watch. In at number one, we have the wrong winner announced for Miss Universe. For pretty much all contestants of Miss Universe, it will be their lifelong dream to win, and they will have worked really, really hard to get to this moment. First, a contestant has to win the title of their country, which is no easy feat. Then, they're pitted against all of the other participating countries. It's insane. So, when a host like Steve Harvey makes a balls up when announcing the winner, and you think that you won and you haven't, it's pretty devastating. This is exactly what happened in 2015. Steve announces Miss Columbia as the winner, when really it was Miss Philippines. Miss Columbia is then crowned and given the Miss Universe sash, holds her country's flag, smiles and waves at the audience, and basically acts like she she has had the best moment of her life. She does this for a full two minutes before Steve realizes his mistake, and Miss Philippines has to awkwardly shuffle forward. Then an assistant has to take the crown, flowers, and sash off Miss Columbia, who starts to cry. It is chaos. All right, so starting us off at number ten, we have Survivor. A contestant on the show, Jeff Varner, outed Zeke Smith as a transgender during a tribal council in a disgusting attempt to paint him as a deceitful person. It was a very shocking and controversial moment. I did watch the season, I did watch this moment, and it caused the nation to hate and despise Jeff Varner for his actions. Once the episode aired, he was ridiculed on social media, receiving negative comments and even death threats. He was eventually fired from his job, and his life will never be the same. Why haven't you told anyone you're transgender? Extreme Makeover Home Edition comes in at number 9. This is a reality show where contractors and designers build a new home for less fortunate families. But I guess this is too good to be true because Brian Okava and his family were left with a huge house that they could no longer afford. On the episode, they were surprised when they saw their bungalow house had been transformed into a two story mansion, like a mega mansion. However, they struggled for the next couple of years trying to keep Keep up with their extreme bills and high property taxes. So the family was actually forced to sell their house and they even lost money in the sale. Number 8 brings us to the real housewives of DC. Charles Omini's life was completely ruined after he appeared on the reality TV show. This is a show that follows the lives of several rich and housewives who live in extremely lavish lifestyles. Seems like a dream, right? Well, for one of the stars on the TV series, it was their biggest mistake of their life. Due to the reputation of his wife, while she appeared on the show, his career as a photojournalist began to suffer. He struggled to build professional relationships and everyone who watched the show hated him. So it ultimately ruined his marriage and it cost him his job. Teen Mom delivers in at number 7. Ever since Amber Portwood has appeared on a reality TV show at the age of 16 years old, her life has been put under a microscope. The fame must have really gone to her because she has had a tough time coping with drug addiction. She also had a tough time coping with rehab in prison. She was sentenced to five years in jail for drug possession charges and she's even been filmed verbally and physically assaulting her daughter's father on the reality show. Things still didn't improve for Amber. She now has been diagnosed with borderline personality and a bipolar disorder and the reports of her meeting with a representative from Vivid Entertainment which is a porn company, an adult entertainment company. If she enters into the adult film industry, her life will no doubt take another drastic turn. Bachelor in Paradise creeps in at number 
number 6. Earlier on this year, the contestants on the show, Demario Jackson was in hot water after a producer accused him of committing sexual assault with Corinne Olympios. Both of them were reportedly drinking during the sexual encounter and the show was immediately shut down in order to investigate the incident. During the time, Demario was painted as a villain and his character was attacked. Even though the investigators concluded that it was not sexual assault, his reputation is so damaged that he may not be able to recover from this. A quick google search of his name and then bam, his name is, is right next to sexual assault allegations. This is not what you want your name to be next to and he can't remove it, it's out there. Now at number 5, we're talking about The Swan. This is a strange TV show where women will be judged by others and if they are seen as ugly, they are given an extreme makeover that includes several types of plastic surgery. Not really sure what the heck kind of show this is, but this seems like a terrible idea for a reality show, but for some reason uh, you turn anything into a reality TV show these days. I bet in the contract in fine print it says, warning, you will suffer extreme depression and worthlessness if you choose to participate. Oh, and you probably won't recognize yourself after the surgeries. I I'm sorry to laugh, but it's true. The surgeries are just horrible. Well, for Lori Aris, this is exactly what happened. She appeared on an episode of The Swamp, but now she doesn't even leave her house except for when she sees her therapist every few months. After appearing on the show, she suffers from bipolar depression, agoraphobia, which is a fear of crowds or being in public places, and body dysphoric disorder. Big Brother comes in at number four. This is a reality show where house guests live together in a specially constructed house that is isolated from the outside world. Each week, one member is voted out until one person is left standing. They're constantly recorded and watched 24 7. One contestant on the show named Leslie Sanderson was portrayed as a villain, and after she was evicted from the show, she had a tough time coping with the real world. She said, Big Brother ruined my life and turned me into a hate figure. I thought cocaine was the only way to block out the pain. Before Big Brother, I never touched drugs. After the show, she was raped, addicted to drugs, and even tried to kill herself. Now, at number three is Extreme Makeover. In this reality TV show, people volunteer to have an extensive makeover in Hollywood. These men and women have extreme makeovers that involve plastic surgery, extreme exercise regimens, hairdressing and styling. Well for Delisa Williams, this whole experience for her was too much to handle. When the producers were preparing for her episode, they coerced her family members so verbally abusing her on camera. They thought this would create more drama and views. The surgery was ultimately cancelled and poor Delise felt depressed and she couldn't cope with the hurtful things that was said to her, so she ended up committing suicide. Drowning comes in at number 2. Back in 2009, a contestant in a Pakistani reality show drowned on TV during a crazy stunt in which he tried to swim across the lake while wearing a 15 pound backpack. The men was screaming for help and the cast and crew rushed over to save him, but unfortunately they weren't fast enough. His body was later discovered by rescue divers. That's pretty messed up. And at number 1, we have Uruguay reality TV show. While filming an episode for the show, participants worked together in a test of strength challenges in order to push and pull a locomotive train along a railway track. They complete the task, but they lost control of the train and it ran over 20 of the contestants. Is this real life right now? The runaway train killed 7 people and injured at least 11, severing their limbs and leaving them in excruciating pain. There were even 3,000 school children who were at the recording and witnessed the incident. Ugh, that's just, that's gonna scar you for life. I'm pretty sure they were left in a state of shock. Right into our number 10. So in this episode of Wheel of Fortune, one of the contestants tries to make a guess on the sentence on the board when there's only one letter up there. Everyone's obviously laughing about it, but then it's this woman's turn and she has this guess. Three seconds. Riding a white horse. Riding a white horse? Yeah, what is everyone's obsession with horse? My guess is it's a black horse. But let's move on to our number 9 now guys, which is from a classic TV show that I used to love called Catchphrase. This was a classic 90s show in the UK and they had this segment where the contestants had to guess what a cartoon character was doing as they removed panels on the screen. Now it usually went fine, everything was all very nice and family friendly, but then one episode this happened. 5 seconds, here we go. 290 pounds. What do you think it is? Yeah, and with every panel that got removed, it looked worse and worse. But can you guys guess what actually happened? Can you guys guess what it actually was? That's right, a snake charmer. What were you guys thinking? Hmm, get your minds out of the gutter as we move on to our number eight. Now, this clip is from the TV show The Price is Right, and the contestant Breton, he walks up, 
to play flip, flop, or flip, flop. He has to try and flip or flop or flip and flop the price that's there to match up with the price of the actual prize if he wants to win it. And he looks to the audience for some help and then he does this. No! Oh, that's kind of awkward. But to be fair, guys, the title of this video is Flip Flop Cheetah, which I think is a little bit harsh. I just think Breton was getting too excited about the prize. All right, we're moving on to our number seven now, but we're staying with the prices right. And I want to ask you guys, how much would you pay for a hammock? Whatever your guess is, it's probably a lot closer than this guy. Seven fifty. Seven fifty. Good luck. Mary Sue. Hi. Uh, Twelve hundred, please. Twelve hundred dollars, Aaron. Can I, can you we got 750 and 1200 So far, so good. They all sound like reasonable prices for a hammock, but there's one contestant left. Corey, take it away. What's your guess? 7000 7000 7000 7000 Wow. I want to know what kind of hammocks this guy is using. $7,000 for a hammock. What kind of hammock is this? Does it sing you to sleep? Does it make you breakfast in the morning? Does it massage you? Like, why would you pay that much? Let's jump on to our number six now, which is a very old episode of Family Feud, where this guy is being asked to name a bear. It's a clean board, and he just has to name one type of bear. So what do you guys think? Grizzly bear? Polar bear? Black forest bear? That's quite a good one. Let's see what he had to say. Yeah, Papa Bear. Um, someone needs to tell him that Goldilocks isn't real. There is no Papa Bear or Mama Bear or Baby Bear, unless you're talking about Ewoks. Yeah, they were definitely real. Anyway, guys, we're at number five now, so we're halfway through this video. And I want to ask you guys, who wants to be a millionaire? Well, this contestant certainly did. Her name is Lovey Yu. It's an interesting name, but how far do you guys think she will get? Will she get the million? Hmm, well, let's get past the first question, which is this. Uh, I will see final answer. Ouch, that one has got to hurt. Everyone knows that the animal that releases ink from its ink sack is Paris Hilton. Wow, we're at number four now, guys. Time flies when you're talking about ridiculous game show bloopers. So if there's one thing that's better than just one ridiculous game show bloopers, it's multiple ridiculous game show bloopers. And Family Feud is perfect for that because it gives you the chance to give multiple answers in the bonus round. Yeah, that all sounds great, unless you're this guy. Let's hear some of his answers. Brand of gasoline. Regular. Something that comes with a summer storm. Snow. A sport with an all-star game. <laughs> Turn around. Amazing. Well, he was paired up with his dad, though, so there's a chance that his dad can now come out, save the day, give some great answers. Take it away, Dad. Name an animal with three letters in its name. Alligator. <laughs> Something found in a refrigerator. Milk. Try again. Uh, ice. A brand of gasoline. Ethel. Wow, chip off the old block. Like father, like son. Let's move on to our number three. It's the UK version of Family Fortunes, and judging by the awful haircuts and clothes in this one, I'm guessing it's from the late 80s. And this is the question they got asked. We asked 100 people to name a famous robber. <laughs> Joe. Um, cops. And robber. Very nice one. Cops and robbers. <laughs> cops and robbers. Wow. Now, to be fair, I can't actually think of many famous robbers off the top of my head. Maybe like Bonnie and Clyde. But come on, cops and robbers, really? I'm going to go ahead and say that's a pretty ridiculous blooper. All right, guys, and number two is from a game show in the United States of America. You'll realize why I'm emphasizing that after you hear this. What country will your husband say the last foreign car he rode in was manufactured, friend? The United States. <laughs> That's not a foreign country. Um. Wow. But it's okay though, because a guy gives her another chance to come up with any other country, any foreign country. Here we go. Texas. Texas! You just couldn't write that. All right, guys, we've looked at all kinds of ridiculous game show bloopers, from $7,000 hammocks to owls with ink sacks and even weird looking snake charmers. But now it's time for our number one, and it needs no introduction. Just roll the clip. Something a burglar would not want to see when he breaks into a house. Rob. Naked grandma. Naked, huh? <laughs> well, he's technically not wrong. I don't think 
anyone, especially a burglar, would want to see your naked grandma when they break into your house. I also don't think he got any points for that, but it does make me think, guys, next time you get asked a question that you just don't know the answer to, just shout, naked grandma, and everything might be alright. Dr. Phil getting heated brings us to number 10. During this episode, Dr. Phil is trying to mediate a fight between a mother and a childcare worker. When Dr. Phil was talking to the worker, the mother interrupted him like a billion times, and that's when all hell broke loose. You don't want Dr. Phil being mad at you. Let me please, oh, let me please okay, have an intelligent conversation without you two bickering back and forth, because I don't want to hear it. I wasn't bickering. I was Okay. No, all I, the only. Is, it, is that not what happened? I got a yes, rewind that, button, that, no, and we that, can damn sure play it back. If you have a high-profile mental health professional here advocating for okay. your children to stop an attacker. I would think that would be a time that you just wouldn't want to interject. Okay. You should know better than to interrupt Dr. Phil, especially when he's on your side. She just kept digging her grave deeper and deeper, and Dr. Phil basically handed her a shovel. I just love it when the audience claps and supports Dr. Phil roasting the people on his show. It's like a milder version of Jerry Springer. Now at number 9, we have a guest who was escorted off of the stage. Yeah. I know, that doesn't sound too surprising. Well, this guy actually yelled at Dr. Phil, he moonwalked on the stage, and twerked before he was thrown out. I mean, it takes a lot to be thrown out on Dr. Phil. Maybe this guy was a bad twerker, and Dr. Phil wasn't having it. It seems to me like he actually got away with a lot, but as we all know, Dr. Phil probably loved it because that means more hits on his YouTube videos, and of course on his TV show. And if you guys haven't guessed it by now, obviously I'm talking about Sexy Vegan. If you've never heard of him before, well, you're in for a treat. I am the beautiful vegan messiah. Okay, just wait, that is only a warm up. My mom's a sociopathic piece of <laughs> I have the highest score in Hot or Not history. I got 9.9 out of 10 after 327 women rated me. Let's see your talent. Let's see your talent, you ugly piece of Okay, stop. Hey, hey, look at me. So the moral of the story here is to stay in school. Don't do drugs and never attempt to do the moonwalk if you can't actually do it because it's insulting Michael Jackson and you're gonna be kicked off the Dr. Phil show. An explosive woman brings us to number eight. What can we do to try to help this? Nothing, leave me the phone is what you can do. Okay, whoa, who peed in her cornflakes this morning? It seemed like the producer was only trying to help her, but obviously we don't know the whole story. Sometimes producers try to push people's buttons in order to get them to freak out on camera. Because honestly, if they were actually trying to help them, then why is the camera rolling? Get the camera out of my face! Get me out of here! Why don't you shut the up and get me out of here? They literally did the opposite of calm her down. She's so pissed off. It's like they made things a thousand times worse. Okay, Dr. Phil roasts a rude teenager and this brings us to number seven. So it's time to sit back, grab some marshmallows, and let's watch the roast begin. Bailey, how are you? Um, not good. Yeah, why is that? I was told that y'all brought someone here that I explicitly said not to bring. Okay, whoa, 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 this interview just started and she's already giving Dr. Phil some serious cut eye. I mean, relax. Well, as we all know, Dr. Phil doesn't put up with anybody's bull crap, so here is his reaction to that. Would you like to leave? Um. Because you can certainly leave, because nobody tells me who to put on my show, including you. Okay. So, if you don't. That lady clapping in the audience is so proud of Dr. Phil. Well, as the interview goes on, this creepy cyber stalker girl started to get really emotional, and Dr. Phil shut her down really fast. And y'all can laugh at me, it's fine. I will be your spectacle. I will be your laughing, laughing spectacle. You can all laugh at me, it's Well, fine. you know what? I think we're just gonna shut this down because I'm not into all this melodrama and you playing the victim and everything. Dr. Phil was savage before being savage was even a thing. Guest freaks out and walks off stage and this takes us to number six. If David actually knew oh, no. it was good for him, he would cut all his losses and run. That was probably the shortest guest appearance ever on Dr. Phil. You blink, you missed it. And I love how quiet the studio was and all you can hear was her stomping. Let me out this door right now. First of all, um, you better get your information straight. David, thanks for being here. That's just super awkward. Why is she so defensive? But wait, there's more. The meltdown actually continued. You guys falsify. You know what, what? that's falsify. fine, dude. That's fine, I'm telling you right now, Justin. What falsify? Falsify my 
ass. I'm telling you guys right now with your false I came on this. You know someone is super pissed when they need to take their heels off. Once someone takes their heels off, just go the other way because you don't want to show down with them. Okay, moving on, a blowout fight punches its way into number five. If Louie came to me, I would Leave never her. do this Mom. to you. Stop. I have Get off the stage and we're not talking You need anymore. to sit down and listen no. to your daughter. So they were having a heated argument because the daughter feels like her mother is faking illnesses and she's being a terrible mother. So now, when the daughter is calling her out, the mother is clearly being defensive. Do not reject her in this moment Please. where she no. is telling you, you what she ever. is feeling. <clears throat> Unlike a lot of the other fights we see in Dr. Phil, this one looks very real and I find it hard to watch. I really hope Dr. Phil helped them out and that they were able to work through their issues. But now, coming in at number four, we have an explosive woman. I'm gonna kick the living out of that bitch. Okay, okay. Calm, sir, oh, calm no, down, whoa, whoa. Okay, holy crap, is it just me or is anyone else terrified? Let's take a look at a freeze frame of her face. She looks so pissed off and I would never want to get into an argument with her because I think she would claw my eyes out. I don't know what you have on your mind or She's who you mistake. think you are. But that's not happening here. Yeah, you tell her, Dr. Phil. But if you thought her anger was out of control, just wait until you see who comes out of the curtain next. Who the f do you think you are? No, whoa, 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 no, 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 no. You, you need to stop right there. You know how I said the first girl would claw my eyes out? Well, she's nothing compared to this girl. And now I'm super uncomfortable, so let's move on. Next up, number three, we have a 14 year old girl completely freaking out. Get me the out of this room. I'm not getting sent the away. Get me, me out. Me Get, me out. Get 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 me out. I'm not saying in here, though. Apparently this girl is 14 years old, but she's acting like she's six. And she was just told that she can't have any more candy. You know how they just start to freak out on the ground and stomping their hands and their feet? Well, she's freaking out because her parents wants to send her to a turnaround ranch, which specializes in teenagers with rage issues. I think it's a pretty appropriate place to send her. But I can kind of see where she's coming from. The producers literally locked her in a room full of cameras, and everyone is telling her that she's going to be sent away. I don't know about you guys, but I'd probably act, you know, somewhat with how she acted. I don't know if it's right to corner someone like that, especially when there's three cameras like right in your face. So of course, the cash me outside girl makes it into our list at number two. Yeah, that's a lot of anger for a 13-year-old girl. She might be the angriest 13-year-old ever who made Dr. Phil famous. And I really hope that camera is water resistant because I'm sure it's really an expensive camera. But as we all know, that's not her only freak out. We can do like a top 10 list. Catch me outside girl freak outs for sure. Okay, I feel so bad for this poor camera guy. I mean, he's just trying to make a living and already in a span of less than an hour, he's being yelled at. He had hot water poured on him and now he's being hit with her hand. I hope he gets some extra pay for all of this abuse. But let's go back to Danielle for a second. She was actually sent to a turnaround ranch, but obviously the program didn't help her because she is still misbehaving and getting into trouble. Dr. Phil allows a guest to let loose and this brings us to number one. As we've seen on this list, Dr. Phil is usually pretty quick at shutting people down when they interrupt him or when they're being violent or rude. But for some reason, he actually allowed a man to make several threats on his TV show. $11,000 and if I could get my ass to find you, I'd kill you. Do you understand this? I don't understand. Yeah, you don't understand, you sorry. You dig me out of $211,000. Okay, what the heck, Dr. Phil? He's actually holding up the microphone to the guy's mouth when he says he was going to kill that person. Is this real life right now? I bet you guys thought I'd make it through the entire video without saying that line, but I, I had to at that moment. This in at number 10 with The Bachelor who has changed his mind on national TV. So on the 13th season of The Bachelor, Jason Mesnick initially chose Melissa Rycroft to be his fiance during the season finale. But after the show, he claimed that the chemistry wasn't there and this relationship wasn't what he thought it would be. So during the show's episode of after the final rose, he changed his mind and he chose Molly Mullaney. 
essentially dumping Melissa on national TV. Ouch. Well, I guess that was a better decision for him because now they're married and they have two children together. Moving on to number nine, toddlers and Tiara struts out a little prostitute. This is a show about children in the pageant world where three year olds are getting plucked, they're getting themselves bleached and tanned. Well, one shocking episode featured a three year old shredding onto the stage dressed as Julia Roberts, and this is from the movie Pretty Woman. A lot of mothers were shocked and outraged because they felt that this little girl was being sexualized, and it is barely likely that a lot of pedophiles are watching this program. One mother said, We're supposed to protect our children, not sexualize them. Moving into number seven, oops, I mean number eight, when the wrong number was announced on the Australia's Next Top Model. Wow, that's awkward. This occurred on live TV during the sixth series finale when the host Sarah Murdoch read the wrong feed from the teleprompter due to some technical issues. She even gave her winning speech before she was embarrassed just moments later. Everyone's jaw dropped and millions of people were shocked when they were watching this on live TV. Honestly, this is just such an awkward moment. I feel so bad for that poor girl. It was fed to me wrong. It's alright. It's okay, oh, Sarah. It's God. This is what happens when you have live TV, folks. I'm so sorry. It's this okay. is Number 7, we're talking about Tyra Banks freaking out on America's Next Top Model. In the 2005 season, Tyra Banks lost her composure when she was seen yelling and screaming out at a contestant that was just eliminated from the competition. Tiffany Richardson was sulking and had a defeatist attitude which made Tyra Banks angry. It seemed as though Tiffany thought that this competition was a joke and she blamed it on the past struggles in her life and not being able to accomplish anything. Tyra Banks said that she could have won the entire competition and she needs to start taking responsibility for her herself and for her future. I was rooting for you. We were all rooting for you. How dare you learn something from this. Number six brings us to Juan Pablo from The Bachelor. He seemed to be the most disliked bachelor ever because of his smug and pompous attitude. The host Chris Harrison didn't even try to hide the fact that he heavily disliked Juan Pablo for many reasons. The girls even went against him during the women tell all special. But one of the most shocking things he has said or done was when he said that a gay or bisexual bachelor wouldn't be a good example for his kids. He went on to say that they're more pervert in a sense and that their show would be hard to watch. Now, of course, this stirred up huge controversy due to his homophobic attitude and statement. ABC quickly released a statement saying Juan Pablo's comments were careless, thoughtless, and insensitive, and in no way reflect the views of the network, their show's producers, or studio. Next up at number five is The Hills was revealed to be all fake. After running successfully for six seasons, the series finale came out with one of the biggest reveals ever on the show. There have been many speculations surrounding whether or not the show was scripted, but viewers were shocked when they watched the last scene of the series. Basically, Brody Jenner and Kristen Cavallari were saying their goodbyes, and then the camera zoomed it revealed that it was all staged and it was all being filmed in a Los Angeles set. Number four is pretty disgusting, but when we're talking about people who drank semen and urine, yeah. Those were the right words to describe this. Do you guys remember Fear Factor? Well, during the second round, Fear Factor is notorious for making people eat or drink the most disgusting things ever imagined. Well, I think they took this a little bit too far. During its revived series in 2011-2012, they tasked the contestants with drinking donkey uh -huh. urine uh -huh. and donkey semen. I mean, is this real life right now? I take the walk of shame no problem. There's no way that I'm about to do that. Well, NBC was later hesitant about airing the episode and they finally came to decision to not air it in the US. So they made these contestants go through hell for nothing because now they have no fame. Well some of the footage did manage to make its way onto the internet because that's what it does. And this left the viewers feeling very nauseous. The gigantic slap heard all around the world on the real world makes its way onto this list on number 3. It's no surprise this violent and emotional outbursts are the norm on many reality TV shows. But it's still shocking when we see someone physically hurting another person on national TV. Okay take for instance. Back in 1998, on the seventh season of The Real World, when Stephen Williams slapped his roommate Irene McGee in the face after she accused him of being gay, producers called a house meeting with the cast to watch the footage of the slap and discuss whether or not Stephen should leave the show. Ultimately, he was allowed to stay if he agreed to take anger management classes. When the Big Brother house was racist, well, this comes into number two. Several housemates of the 15th season of Big Brother outraged viewers with their unapologetic display of racism, homophobia, and misogyny. Gina 
Anna Marie Zimmerman was pretty comfortable with using the N word in her casual conversations. And because of this, she was later fired from her job. But probably the most notorious housemate was a model from Texas named Erin Grease. She was quickly dropped from her modeling agency after her antics on the show. She would constantly make degrading remarks towards the Asian and African American housemates. And one of the most awful things that she said was, be careful what you say in the dark, you may not be able to see the beep. Finally, coming into number one spot, when Johnny Fairplay lied about his dead grandmother. Survival Pearl Island was a season that completely outraged fans. He got one of his friends to lie about his grandmother passing away if he made it far enough where the show had loved ones visit. So when his friend broke the fake news, Johnny faked his own grief and won a 24 hour visit with his friend and back home because the castmates were feeling sympathetic for him. Jeff Probst called him completely despicable and banned him from all future Survivor events. Events. Coming in at number 10, we have The Biggest Loser Lost Too Much Weight. If you haven't seen the TV show The Biggest Loser, it's basically an American TV show that pits overweight contestants against one another on their weight loss journey. Usually the show contestants try to lose weight in a healthy and sustainable way, but the season 15 winner, Rachel Fredrickson, dropped 155 pounds down to weigh in at a scary 105 pounds. Judges Gillian Michaels and Bob Harper were shocked at her transformation, which showcased the biggest weight loss in the show's history. Many people watching called Rachel's progress unhealthy, something that she later admitted to. A lot of people saw this as glamorizing an eating disorder. Coming in at number 9, we have Rosalyn has an affair with a crew member on The Bachelor. Uh oh. So the idea of The Bachelor is for a group of ladies to vie for the attention of an eligible, you know, bachelor. In 2010, Rosalyn Papa was called out on air for having an affair with one of the show's producers. Show host Chris Harrison televised a conversation with the young mum, calling the affair embarrassing for the show and he also said that the member of the crew in question had been fired. Awkward. Coming in at number 8, we have the time Portia slapped Kenya on The Real Housewives of Atlanta. A brawl on reality TV always causes a stir, and things really escalated in 2014 on The Real Housewives of Atlanta set. Basically, Kenya accused Portia of cheating on her husband. There was a large degree of hair pulling and slapping and dragging, which of course is not okay on TV. Whilst Portia was removed from the show for the episode, controversially, neither her nor Kenya were fired. Coming in at number 7, we we have Toddlers and Tiara's Prostitute Scandal. In the popular TLC show Toddlers and Tiara's, the show caused outrage when a mum, Wendy Dickey, dressed her three year old daughter Paisley in a pretty woman costume. Of course, the costume in question was mimicking one worn by Julia Roberts, who of course played a prostitute. Now, is it okay to dress a three year old as a prostitute in knee high boots and a miniskirt? No, no, it's not. ABC's Sherry Shepard spoke out against the episode, saying, Your job is to protect your child. If you don't think pedophiles are watching the show, I have a bridge I want to sell you. Coming in at number 6, we have the time Here Comes Honey Boo Boo was cancelled. Honey Boo Boo Child was a controversy onto herself from the very beginning when she debuted in the public eye on Toddlers and Tiaras. But obviously, with controversial figures comes ratings, and eventually the toddler and her family were awarded a TV show of their very own. In 2014, after a two year run, the show was cancelled when it was revealed that the mum, June Shannon was dating a man on the sex offenders register. Mark Antony was convicted of aggregated child molestation with an 8 year old, which is pretty darn disgusting. Despite having a whole seasons worth of content ready to go, the show was pulled and 6 months of content went unaired. Coming in at number 5, we have Coughgate on Who Wants to Be a Millionaire. Back in 2001, Mark Ingram won 1 million pounds on the British TV show Who Wants to Be a Millionaire, but actually, it turns out he cheated. Using his wife, Diana and his friend Tequin Whitock, Ingram devised a coughing scheme wherein his accomplices would signal which way he should answer. After all of the fanfare of winning, he was found out. He was then ordered to give the money back, fined, and given a prison sentence. Awkward. He later appeared on Wife Swap with Jade Goody, who is coming in next for a scandal of her very own. But before we get there though, I thought I would mention that Chappy Boy tripped on an apple whilst mowing the lawn in 2010 and sliced off three of his toes. Yikes. I 
Okay, back to Jade Goody, who caused a serious stir in 2007 with her racist remarks in the Big Brother house. Now that's all coming into number four. So Jade Goody found fame in 2003 when she appeared on the British outpost of the regular Big Brother. She won over her audience with her seemingly sweet but totally dumb persona. Fast forward four years and she is back on Big Brother, this time the celebrity edition, and this time she's not just dumb, but she's a dumb, dumb racist. She and co contestants Joe O'Meara and Danielle Lloyd garnered 44,500 complaints for their racist comments towards Shilpa Shetty. They called her a packy and dubbed her Shilpa Poppadom, which is absolutely not acceptable. This led to international outcry, with the then Prime Minister of England, Gordon Brown, condemning the show. Jade died of cervical cancer two years later. Coming in at number three, we have 17 year old Harry Styles dating 32 year old Caroline Flack after an X Factor appearance. One Direction superstar Harry Styles caused a media storm when he was spotted leaving the Extra Factor presenter's London apartment after appearing on the show. There were a lot of raised eyebrows at the age gap, with Flack being 15 years older than the pop star. The relationship ended when Flack started getting Twitter death threats. Coming in at number two, Johnny Fairplay lied about a dead grandmother on Survivor. Johnny was everything other than a fair player on Survivor in 2003 when his friend Dan came. Came to visit him in a family and friends episode. Johnny asked how his grandma was doing, and Dan said, She died, dude. Johnny gained a whole load of sympathy from the audience and his fellow contestants. Now, this secured his place amid the last seven, but it all turned out to be a disgusting lie. Horrendous, who does that? Finally, a disgusting scandal that brought down a seven year television dynasty, we have the Josh Duggar sexual abuse scandal. This was all coming from 19 Kids and Counting. Now, 19 Kids and Counting was a popular reality TV show from 2008 to 2015. It was cancelled in light of a sex scandal. In May 2015, a police report from nine years prior was published in the Touch Weekly magazine. The report detailed sexual molestation allegations against five underage girls. Girls, including four of his sisters. The report said that he touched their breasts and genitals whilst they were sleeping, and in some really, really horrible cases, whilst they were awake as well. The case was not fully investigated as the statute of limitations had expired. TLC cancelled the show and removed all reruns. Number 10, we have Karen's Extreme Makeover. When Extreme Makeover first aired in the United States in 2002, it shocked many viewers with its glorification of plastic surgery. In the first episode, Dr. Perlman worked works with the 44 year old Karen Lindley who was about to get married for a second time. At the beginning we could see a mousy like woman, but after flying to Beverly Hills and working with Dr. Perlman, she undergoes face, nose and neck surgeries and breast enlargements and some serious restyling, teeth whitening and a spray tanning. She looked totally different and some people were outraged. Ok, in at number 9 we have the time Snooki got punched on the Jersey Shore. Jersey Shore is one of the most popular reality TV shows out there because there's so much drama. Well, this show made Nicole Polinzi, aka Snooki, famous. Back in 2009, an episode of the MTV Classic showed Snooki get a full punch in the face. Snooki was with fellow Jersey Shore cast members at Beachcomber Bar and Grill in Seaside Heights, and this is in New Jersey, of course, when she accused the man of stealing her drink. Well, the man, Brad Furrow, born in Queens, punched her hard in the face. She fell on the bar stool. Airing the incident lost MTV a lot of support, including sponsors. Domino's Pizza was one of them. And they pulled out of the sponsorships after the show was aired. Many viewers thought that this was a sign that reality TV was just going too far. Speaking of taking it too far, in at number 8 we have the real world Hawaii cast member who had to be stopped from drunk driving by the show's producers. I mean what is going on? Ruthie from real world Hawaii was known to be trouble. She often drank way too much and would fly into rages because of her alcohol problem. In one of the episodes of the show, producers had to break the fourth wall and step into the show to stop her from getting behind the wheel drunk. After the episode aired, Ruthie checked into rehab. So you know the world's most famous boy band of the past 30 years? You guys know what I'm talking about? Well, things didn't start out to be so successful for them. Well, in at number seven, we have One Direction, who has voted off the X Factor. This was huge. In 2010, the boys made it through the final round, but were booted off the show in third place. This was a shock to many people who picked the boys to win. The footage is even more shocking today as we see the boys at the start of their career totally 
totally crushed despite Sunny Cowell promising them a bright future. More shocking than the departure of One Direction, The X Factor, was the arrival of Susan Boyle on Brin's Got Talent, and this comes in to number six. If you haven't seen this audition clip, you have to see it. I'll link to it down below. I dreamed a dream in time gone by. It is proof that appearances can be deceiving. Backstage TV host Ant and Dees interviewed a like poor looking 47 year old woman who is seen scoffing a sandwich and confessing she's never been kissed before. As she walked into the stage to be greeted by judges Pierce Morgan, Simon Cowell, and Amanda Holden, the audience are clearly laughing at her. They quickly shut up as she opens up her mouth and produces the voice of an absolute angel. I mean, the moment was spectacular. It was so shocking. Pierce Morgan even said her voice was the biggest surprise they had in three years. It was the biggest surprise ever. Come on. We mentioned a toddler dressed as Julia Roberts' prostitute's character in Pretty Woman in Part 2, but we have found a way more inappropriate costume from Toddlers and Tiara up next at number five. And that is the Madonna comb breast costume. I mean, what did I just say? Two-year-olds can barely even walk or talk, so entering them into a beauty pageant at such a young age is controversial as it is. Things get way more controversial in this clip, we see a two-year-old named Maya take off an angel costume to reveal a tight gold outfit with a comb bra. Just like Madonna from the 80s, the toddler clearly gets scared and grabs at her fake comb boobs, while her mom encourages her to shake her hips. I mean, she's two. How is this okay? What is going on? What are you making your daughter do right now? Next up, not classy at all, we were at number four. We have sex on live TV contestants have been getting horny on Big Brother for years, but now in 2016, C-list celebrities Marco Pierre White Jr. and Laura Carter got it on during the 17th season of Big Brother UK. I mean, what is going on over there? The chef's son and actress, who was 10 years his senior, felt an instant attraction, but now we're aware that the cameras are everywhere in the Big Brother house, and they're broadcasting 24-7. The pair caused several scandals, especially when Lauren appeared to choke Marco, and when he put her breasts in his mouth. The whole thing sparked thousands of complaints from off-cam. This next infamous reality TV moment is truly shocking. Coming in at number three, we see Lori give up her baby for adoption on 16 and pregnant. Perhaps reality TV show has gone too far. We see a real teenager giving up a baby for adoption on TV. Nonetheless, the episode of 16 and pregnant aired to mixed reviews. This episode aired on March in 2010. Despite declaring her parents for forcing her to give up the baby on air, Lori later said that she did the right thing. Okay, moving into number two, we have a death on the deadliest catch. It is rare that a reality TV show deals with death. I mean, Survivor, th there's moments that comes close, but we never actually see death on TV. But tragedy struck in the sixth season of Discovery Channel's Deadliest Catch. Captain Phil Harris, the owner of a crabbing vessel, had a stroke on the show, but there was orders for the cameras to keep on rolling. He later died of a pulmonary embolism, of all which was documented for the series. It's documented for the views. Documented why? Finally, at number one, probably one of the most shocking things that happen on reality TV, we have the time a guy put a lit firework up his butt and this took place in what happens in Sunny Beach. The British reality TV show aired on Channel 4 with one episode getting way more complaints than the other ones. Why? Because it showed a guy shoving a firework up his butt and lighting it and collapsing after it went off. I mean, what's he thinking? A Brit abroad in Bulgaria. Initially, the boys think it's all fun and games until the perpetrator starts bleeding from his butthole and then he has to go to the hospital. This is not funny. And they say tell him Television isn't entertaining anymore. I mean, television is very entertaining, but some things are just, they go a little bit too far, but that's why it's reality TV.